Uh, we looked at uh, sort of those kind of documents. We also do several uh, assessments. Um, the two big ones we do is a customer technology survey. And we do um, what's called the edge assessment survey, which lets us look at our technology in comparison to our peers. Uh, also, we definitely looked at national trends. Um, here, uh, Pew Research, uh, Urban Libraries Council, computers and libraries, those kind of places that kind of show trends such as Increased mobility, um, internet gaps, we're starting to see that, bandwidth gaps. Um, the importance of digital literacy and understanding information, obviously, the last couple of weeks have really seen uh, what happens when um, people misunderstand information online. And uh, we're also understanding, you know, what younger generations are doing. So kind of those large national trends. And again, wanting to pick those trends, though, and see how they focus in Wichita. And of course, we had a lot of staff discussions as we put this together. The, uh, the process we went was pretty straightforward. I wrote the document just like I did with the, the last tech plan. I then got with key staff and reviewed that and made some changes. And then we pushed that to our uh, library management team. Again, that kind of came back with some ebb and flow over uh, what those should be. And then uh, lastly, we always come to the board to get your endorsement. Uh, of our work plans like we do for other annual uh, work plans and things like that. Um, again, there's too much in the, the document to really go forward with it, but I did try to keep uh, our core focus areas consistent with the last last year, or uh, the last three-year plan, um, just to kind of, I thought they were, uh, still make sense to keep these areas and also lets us compare how we did uh, this round with last year. So we are going to engage the community um, technologies, try to get those more involved, um, make staff much more mobile and able to reach more uh, customers, uh, make sure since everything is really mobile that we have the right infrastructure in place for that. Um, given budgets and other reasons, uh, we want to make sure that we expand our partnerships that we have um, with Bank ICT and other groups, um, go create. Um, so that we can keep those. Uh, we always want to make sure uh, we evaluate all of our technologies so we'll keep doing those components. And then we always make sure we have some strategy for those um, technologies that aren't supported. Um, so that's kind of the big goals that you look through it. We try to keep uh, all of our um, goals and our action plans kind of in those different areas. Um, once again, I'm not uh, going to go through this entire list, but this is just kind of a sampling of all of the different things that we hope to do um, in the next three years. 
Um, a lot of this is, again, I think very reachable and very doable. Um, not a lot in the action plan that I think is going to be sort of off the rails, or, um, but we do uh, offer quite a bit this year um, for, for the next three years we have. Uh, and hopefully as uh, the economic picture becomes um, more uh, uh, in focus, we can actually kind of take a look at this uh, and maybe put some bigger uh, key items in there. Also, especially with programming and our technology training, a lot of that has to happen in person. So uh, we want to look at that. And uh, big for the uh, next three years is we really hope to take a look at everything that happened with COVID. I think it's a, we might as well use this as an opportunity to review how uh, customers are using us. Um, not just uh, inside the building, we kind of focus on that, particularly with services and programs, we want people coming here, but maybe, uh, you know, with all the lessons we've learned from COVID, there might be opportunities to start reaching out to people wherever they are. So we're gonna hopefully take a look at, um, at the lessons we learned from COVID and see how we can incorporate that in our everyday usage and maybe have some interesting stuff out of that. So I'm looking forward to the next three years. I think we put a good, a good plan together I think it does hit our goal. I think it's going to be very flexible. And as we get opportunities, again, as the budget and other things kind of come together, uh, we'll be able to take a look and really uh, amplify the technology that we have for customers and staff over the next three years. So there we are. Very good. Thank you, Jeff. That's a very detailed and comprehensive three-year plan, and I appreciate your efforts on that. Uh, we will get an endorsement for this and have discussion under new business. But at this moment, if any board member has any questions for Jeff, I'm sure he would stand for those. Is there anybody out there that has questions, comments? There's a budget at the back of the plan that mentions $125,000 for the donated materials and handlers at Wesley that has five bins. It is now joining. I was wondering why five bins when we have seven locations. Sure, some of the, uh, some of the, since it is a working document, what, what we're looking at is um, the beginning preliminary plans for Westlink, which um, really didn't get too far off the ground before that project was postponed. Um, if I recall correctly, the five bins, it wasn't going to be for each location. They were going to be, the idea was that we, we wouldn't have room for a large bin, so we kind of had to maximize what we wanted. So they, the idea was to try to get five seemed to be in the price range that we could afford. It also seemed to probably fit our space. Um, so we hadn't gone through a, a, a big detail of what each one of those would be, but it, it's more of a, a function of cost and space than it really is of uh, the amount we actually need. Oh, so. thank you. Okay. Other questions or comments for Jeff? Jeff, I do have one uh, brief question for you. At the beginning of your presentation, you talked about the possibility of financial issues at the city level. How would how would we react if there was a uh, a cut? And are you aware that there is any talk about such that would affect our technology program? Um, no, not at the moment. I don't know. I have any uh, specific. Um, I, I wrote this and we went by the, the discussions we had at management were based on the citywide discussions that we had last year during the budget uh, as it was being put together. Um, the impact, uh, the projected impact of COVID and those kind of things. Um, so we, we wanted to make sure that we didn't sort of um, tie anything too expensive into this that we, we just knew we wouldn't get. So we wanted to be realistic as we, we knew there could be budget issues based on what we were hearing 
um, from the, the discussion about COVID at the city level. So I, we didn't have any specific, you know, this is just what's going to be cut or if we're going to have to see any cuts. It was more just knowing that um, if, if we're having budget issues, there may not be additional monies in there or there may be cuts and therefore we, we might have to not, uh, you know, we might have to look at grants and stuff to support us. So um, really what we would do is, is because this is a working document, we would just kind of, um, the way I cured it, if you look through there, the uh, the first couple of years, I tried to put in more of the the planning stages and the um, and phase projects, which we could do kind of small and cheaply. And then in that third year or that second and third year is when maybe a, a larger scale, when maybe if the money was there. So a lot of it is just in the structure of the, the, the projects is to try to push off any kind of funding for a couple of years so we get a better better sense of what it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One other question. Uh, two years ago when we were having our joint meetings with the city council representatives uh, regarding the branch plan going forward, uh, one of the key areas that the city was interested in was how we were going to expand early childhood literacy uh, with our community. Is there anything in this that we could talk to any of our council members if they would bring this up that would show that we're making additional efforts in that area? Um, there's a few. It, it's kind of in the infrastructure. A lot of that branch work, because it did get postponed, actually kind of got pushed. And you'll see more of it reflected in the, the next year, which would be the 23 plus um, so right now what you're going to see for early literacy is going to be more of the infrastructure development and more um, that kind of thing, improving infrastructure and the backbone if we can as we get to there versus specific programs for early literacy. Uh, some of the work if we can get it as far as um, if we look at getting, if we're able to get into hotspots or laptop uh, circulation or some tablets or things like that. That might help, but all that's kind of in the second and third year stuff because we just don't know if we're going to have that kind of funding. So at the moment, a lot of that got pushed back because of uh, the CIP kind of got pushed back on all those projects. So we, we really aren't looking too much at the branches at the moment. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Jeff? Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, after our call to order, we'll go to the next item on the agenda. That will be the approval of the agenda. Everybody should receive their packet. There's an agenda identified. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I so move. This is Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. We have a motion by Shannon. Is there a second? Second, Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, Director, do we have any public comment today that's been presented? Not that I've been made aware of unless there's something coming in on YouTube. No, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay, we have no public comment today. Item number four will be the minutes of the December 15th. 2020 board meeting. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Chuck, so moved. Thank you, Chuck. We have a motion by Chuck. Is there a second? Donna. Donna. Is that Donna? Donna? Yes, Donna. Thank you, Donna. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Before voting, I would like to say I appreciate the the, uh, the minutes and they were very detailed and uh, exact. And thank you very much for your efforts. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, number five, any unfinished business that anybody has? Seeing none. New business, number six. Uh, preliminary December 2020 finance report and bills. So here's where we're at. These are preliminary numbers. 
Those are in your packet. They're incomplete at this point. We'll have firm numbers by the next board meeting in February. At that time, we may have both year-end and end of January, probably. But at this moment in time, there is nothing to approve because we do not approve the preliminary numbers. So, that being said, this, if any board member has any issue with any of the numbers that are preliminary, we're more than happy to talk about that. Otherwise, we'll wait until the next board meeting to approve official numbers. So, regarding general fund bills or gift and memorial funds, uh, anything that was in the, uh, the packet, is there anybody that wants to pull anything for discussion? Mr. Chairman, Chuck Schmidt. Yes, Chuck. Uh, I talked to uh, someone about this earlier. In the gifts and memorials, there's a mistake the addition that's off by two million um, then it, it should be instead of 721 uh, million i mean i'm sorry 721,000. i'm sorry i said a million uh, hundred thousand it's off it should be 921,000. Uh, I, I can't remember who i talked to but we checked that out and they found that, that the, the uh, formula missed a $200,000 uh, CD in their submittal. If you add those up quickly, you'll see that it comes to nine. Right, right, right. Yeah, uh, page five of five of the Gifted Memorials account. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Thank you, Jack. We'll get that corrected. Yeah, thank you. Good catch, Chuck. Anybody else have anything regarding these preliminary numbers? At the next meeting, when we have the firm numbers, I know we'll talk in more detail because we'll be able to see how the projections came about for the finals, and uh, we'll look at uh, new projections for next year. Okay. Um, next would be 6C, which would be the endorsement of the technology plan that Jeff just provided to us. What we're looking for is, we're not looking for a vote, but is, uh, uh, we do need to endorse, and uh, I will go ahead on behalf of the board, since we're virtual, and just say I appreciate very much Jeff's efforts. It's very comprehensive, it's very complete, and it's realistic. And uh, I know he's still on. If there's anybody that has come up with any comments or questions since he finished, uh, you're more than welcome. Otherwise, I'll make a, uh, a suggestion on behalf of the board that the board endorses the technology plan as presented. Does anybody object? I have a question. Please, thank you. Um, sorry, my internet wasn't working. I have to get it, I had to get on my phone. Um, and I made uh, a comment, um, I came in and he just was commenting about um, the potential uh, Creating a tablet or a laptop living space for the access that we're handling on. Um, if, if the phone was 20 points, and I didn't even really know what else to ask about um, a possibility of extra, extra, extra data, um, mainly because of COVID situation, and I kind of had an answer in the back of my mind. I'm wondering how the library could um, um, help the community with providing this service. So it's good that. You guys have it before. I just wonder if you know it's not That's a good question. Uh, so the the way I I don't know if you missed it, but the way I kind of structured it was um, kind of back to the point of budget was um, kind of uh, since we're kind of unknown about budget this year and next year, kind of some of the the, the items that I knew we'd have to spend. A good deal of money or some money on i kind of back loaded on uh, onto the or loaded on the back end 
Um, I do agree with you that um, there are a lot of things that we, we could be doing that like hotspots and those kind of, and laptops and other things could be more useful now. We are looking at those and trying to find funding and things like that. Um, so we're, we're constantly looking at that uh, as, as a goal. It's, it's one of those things where we, as we're planning, it's like if you put it this year, does it, and we don't do it, then, you know, can we lose momentum? So what, one of the things I was thinking is if we at least kind of spend the next year, three years trying to do it, we can always, you know, in, find COVID money or some kind of grant or something, you can always shift it down um, so we don't kind of lose that. So um, that's kind of how it ended up where it was at. But because it's kind of a working document, um, the way I look at it is it's everything's on the table and, and the, the timeline is, is kind of arbitrary. We kind of look three years ahead um, on every every kind of action plan. And so what we really try to do is, um, the Chromebook dispenser is a, a good example where it was kind of just a on the horizon kind of thing, but we were able to jump out a couple of years ahead we were able to get the, the funding. So uh, as we get those as um, the interim director, you know, these opportunities, um, we always keep those in, in the back of our head. And I've been uh, uh, trying to, we've been having discussions about that, but yeah, I think that's, that's definitely on there. That's kind of where it ended up. And I think we're always looking at opportunities to move these things as we get funding um, is really the big key on a lot of those. And I would just add too that we do look for opportunities through grants and different um, options and finding funding, but oftentimes um, our roadblock is ongoing costs because while we can sometimes find up money to make an upfront purchase, we do need to be able to have enough budget the ongoing maintenance and replacement of that equipment as well. So that we're, we're looking at, at it from different viewpoints that way. Okay. Um, thank you for explaining. Um, I'm just going to mention it just for the sake of mentioning it. I'm sure your explanation is just covered it. I just wanted to know, okay, I, I, I put down um, all the possible the um, because I see you point for you to evaluate here. All uh, Wi Fi network and infrastructure. I was wondering, a maybe possibility if we could look at moving the um, update of Angelo and Rockwell up to 2022 as well. If I didn't come to those, I'm going to go to the other. Yeah, I'm going to go Structure is based on the, the CIP, so that's kind of what the timing it is. Because in each of the brand three models with the CIP, there is funding in there for um, uh, improving the Wi Fi and the, the networking infrastructure at every location. So that's, I tried to match um, the, the infrastructure with what we anticipate getting that funding for CIP. Um, again, as, as Patty Christie mentioned, we're always looking for opportunities um, as we as we look at those. And so if, if funding becomes available, that's definitely something we can we can look at. But that's that's how those ended up where they were is more uh, as the CIP funding got moved around it, it kind of switched um, when that infrastructure would be, be funded through the city. And that's kind of where I pencil them in. And then as I said with the other ones, we can always backfill if we need to down the road. We had some other city budget cuts that are ongoing into 2022, um, 2020, 21, 22. So we're working on that as well. Okay. Um, my next question is. Um, okay. Um, Local experiences and services. Um, there's goal 
um, our red alarm bulb, excuse me. Um, goals, customers have access to library digital app archives through a modern mobile response platform. And so my question is, um, are you meaning to include the archive archives um, for access online? Yeah, so that, that's one of our, our bigger goals. Um, right now we have the, the Wichita Photo Archive, which is a, a joint venture between us, the WSU and the um, State Historical Society um, for photographs. And so what this goal is, is, we're looking at, we've always kind of wanted to get more of our collection. We have very little of our, our photograph collections uh, in the research pavilion online um, it was a that project kind of stalled out and there's really been nothing added to it it's also if you've been to it recently it's very old and outdated um, so we've already had some preliminary discussions with wsu and trying to get that project so we can create um, two things one a new website that really is easier to use um, because it's very old and then once we can kind of get that and get our arrangements with wsu and others on like how we could get it achieved. So technically, how are we going to uh, get all this online? We would start actively uh, archiving uh, the information that we own or be able to copyright to. Well, we start with photograph collections because those are um, usually pretty popular. Um, but then it would be working with um, Michelle Inky and our um, uh, genealogy staff to find out what other materials would make sense to put on there. So the idea is to start, um, kind of start small with, we have photographs, we have some of them digitized, we don't have them all on the website yet. Um, so we can kind of start there, kind of work out all the kinks and the workflows, and then once we kind of get a process started, um, then we can really start amplifying our um, digital footprint and getting not just photographs, but other materials that we might have that, um, that she knows that customers want access to. So yeah, it's kind of the, we want to do what you're saying, which like gives much of our genealogy online. And this is kind of the, the small starting stone, you know, starting step uh, to kind of get that happening. So it'd be, the first step is really, can we make a better website and a better method of getting everything up on the internet? And then once it is, then try to get some easy collections that we have when we go, well, copyright's always the big issue when we start putting stuff online. And then as we do that, working with our staff to figure out what else we can put up and what our customers really want. So it's, okay. hopefully, you know, it, it'll keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but this is sort of the first step. So, um, do you have, um, I guess, a forgiveness for not knowing this, but I was, when you said, uh, which one is the thinking of, um, like um, the NWCC art signs and things like that um, with the Dr. Um, uh, and I know we had hosted in the back um, maybe a couple of years back after like all libraries. Um, do you have um, photo archives of um, that particular instance or people who saw history that the to the NWCC? I don't know the collection that well. Um, Michelle, thank you. With you know that, uh, we can get in touch with Michelle. Oh, I um, I, I'll probably follow up with an email to just kind of um, state while I guess my suggestions on what I'd like to see. <laughs> um, but these are really, this is really good. Um, kind of, all of this is good. Uh, just thinking, you know, just like I was off with you saying, I'm trying to understand what the community would like. I know for sure that um, that would be something that. Um, and that being special for the um, African American community and really the Wichita community as a whole, because it's Wichita history. Um, yeah, know. Michelle and her team would be the, the lead in that. And like um, digital services, yes. we would take care of like the technical, but yeah, we already have discussions of, so yeah, contact Michelle and her team, because they're really going to be the ones um, who look at the collection. Uh, and they'll be looking for two things uh, interest, obviously but also then the copyright issues. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure that there's a clear, um, that we clearly own the city or the library owns the, the rights that we have up. But yeah, those are the kind of things that she's gonna look at to see 
you know, interest is going to be the big one. We don't want to put stuff up that people aren't going to look at, but I'm sure right. they'll take all kinds of ideas. Right. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, I'm really excited. So, I'm um, um, So, I wrote Mahaya, but, because um, I'm always looking for new adventures for Maya, but I also was looking for all of the library branches. Um, I remember listening to Miss um, Cynthia Burner, um, from a while ago, uh, and about how she was going to be um, doing like a digital, um, you know how you have that, uh, what's that digital box in the uh, genealogy area? That, that big one that you can, uh, uh, I think you can ask like newspapers and stuff like that. I don't know what it's called. The, the touch box where the photos are on the, in the, the box on the screen? Yes. Um, so my thought was wanting to, uh, and this goes along with the genealogy, um, and it, I mean, it might just be an interest of mine. I'd be interested in knowing how many people are interested as well, but um, with, um, on, on the point of uh, spreading technology abroad from uh, all around the maybe uh, is, there, is there a possibility of working to smaller um, units that provide a similar service? Um, so I just don't have to go through all to access something like that. If I go to my local library branch, um, maybe there might be a smaller something of technology that provides that same service. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, and yeah, it really, again, it would be um, kind of what we're hoping to do is kind of getting what you're talking about, but kind of backing in. If, if we can create uh, a good website and a good uh, get software underneath that we can put all kinds of stuff in there. Um, and so then you don't need any kind of special tables or any special devices. You basically just jump on a computer and get all the access. So that's yeah. really my long term goal would be if it's important enough and those kind of things that we can get on, I'd rather try to get it kind of up web based so that we can, we don't have to worry about, you know, specific. Uh, you don't need anything special. You just need computer access, or um, if we could get enough stuff on the web, you don't even have to come to the library. You can get some of that stuff at home or, or wherever you're at, um, particularly if the library owns that kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of the larger goal is, is you know to make it so you don't need special equipment. Um, yeah. But then in the meantime, yeah, if we again it comes to the funding, but if we if we could find something like that, sure. Oh, and then so, uh, I, okay, to your point of um, access from home, I think I read something about um, cyber um, security and breaches of that nature that got to work out technical issues with that. So I'm just wondering, um, maybe if you're going to roll out in phases, it could be accessible through computer technology at the, at the branches, and then expand out to the home, you know? Um, while you're still working on your security issues, it's just uh, an idea. But um, that's what we're going to roll it out in phases. I mean, I'm going to play with it. We're going to play with it. Yeah, we tend to do phase, phase approaches, what we do that. And also, as we do it, we also look at which branch. So it's not always the advanced library to get stuff. We always look at which branch makes sense for that particular phase project. So we always want to get it where the most customers are going to use it because that'll give us our best data as we because the, the goal is always kind of at least i have is, is we want to do a project to prove that the concept works and then if it works in one location then try to ex expand it to every location that makes sense um, right. so that's kind of we always start kind of small brain specific and then kind of ex expand as we get as we get to the uh, um, my last um, question is under technology partnership. Um, and it is just a general question of um, are you looking for suggestions on partners for recommend excuse me, I said that wrong. Are you looking for partner recommendation? Um, and uh, and and my follow up question would be either any in work currently. Uh, the second part, uh, there's nothing new current. We, uh, kind of COVID, all the kind of partnerships sort of are kind of on pause. I mean, we still have the ones that we have, um, but um, we haven't 
realistically there's just not much to, to do at the moment so we kind of put those but yes as soon as we do that um the, the first um on like goal one uh like one of the first one is to identify potential fees so when we later this year as we kind of get a better feel for what the second half of the year and you know if the vaccine is working we think we're going to be able to open up um and start using partners more um we're going to start looking at that we always think uh you know if you have a uh, recommendation we're always willing to do that just you know send them to christy or, or to myself or whoever we're always looking at partnership ideas um so we haven't actively been engaging in those um uh, just because of covid and, and the accessibility issues that we have right now but we're always i'm always open to, to new partnerships yeah Thank you. I appreciate the second time answering my question. This is all exciting. Thank you for presenting. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I find it very exciting stuff. Thank you very much. Good questions. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Any other questions? Uh, Chuck, do you have your hand up there? Oh, that's you. Never mind. Sorry. Any other questions for Jeff before we go on? Thank you again, Jeff. Uh, special committee reports. We have no special committee reports this month because we did not meet. Next on the agenda would be the support organization reports. Uh, Julie Crawford, welcome to the uh, the Advanced Learning Library Board of Directors meeting. I believe you're going to be speaking to us from the genealogical committee. Yes. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Do you want my report now? Your floor is yours. Okay, it's pretty, it's pretty short. Um, we continue, the Genealogical Society continues to hold our um, events through Zoom, which includes the monthly events when we have speakers, sometimes it's outside speakers, or somebody within the organization. Um, and our board meetings, of course, are by Zoom. Uh, right now we're in the process of choosing a replacement for our website service provider. Um, the current contract is in place through the end of June, um, but that company is dissolving. Um, we don't expect any problems between now and the end of June, um, and have everything backed up, um, fortunately, but we still need to choose. And um, we've got two candidates, two companies that we're looking at. Um, volunteers are indexing um, Kansas cookbooks so that people can research female names. And um, we've been promoting the, the big read uh, on our website. And right now we have 166 members. Very good. Thank you, Julie. Does anybody have a question for Julie? Okay, we'll go on. Uh, Christy Elberg from the foundation, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. Good afternoon, everyone. Good First of all, I'd just like to wish everybody a happy new year and to thank uh, those of you who gave your gift. Um, thank you for um, making that gift. I didn't um, figure out the percentage, but we increased the number of board giving considerably. We're still not at that 100% yet, but um, I think we had seven people that gave this year that had not given in the past. And so that's really great. And so I just wanted to thank each and every one of you that gave um, for the first time and also for those of you that continue your loyal support of the Library Foundation. It's very important, especially now during COVID, a lot of um, corporations and larger organizations do not see the library as an essential service. And so that is one of the big uh, goals for 2021 that we have at the foundation is to um, continue to educate folks on that. And we've got some great new board members coming on board that are going to help um, us with that messaging. So we're excited about that. I wanted to just go over a little bit um, of our accomplishments, and I apologize if there is no um, handout in your um, board packet. If you're interested in having this information um, in a digital format, I, I have it written, so I can just easily send it to you. Just let me know. 
But um, our 2020 major accomplishments, I think you know that a great deal of the first part of the year was used on cleaning up, entering data, and getting new data for our database. And we ended up with 1,907 constituents with accurate mailing addresses. Um, the beginning of the year, we only had 78 emails uh, for those folks, and now we have 898. Um, which is a substantial increase. It's 47% uh, of our database. We had very few telephone numbers. I didn't even, I don't even know how many we had, not very many. Um, and now we have 1,124. And a lot of this data came from a very successful mailing that we did to our library constituents. We had their mailing address, but we didn't have a telephone number or their email address, and we asked them to send that to us, and uh, Cambridge Shaw, who is the uh, development associate at the foundation, also thought, well, let's ask them why they love the library. And what we learned from that uh, hard print uh, mailed through the U.S. Postal Service mailing is that that is how our constituents like to communicate to us, is through the mail. We had 68 um, people respond with a written why they love the library, which then began this whole other new opportunity that we had only dreamed of having, which is to have a person and a quote to be able to promote library, um, the library and why the other people should support the library. So that was really um, exciting to be able to do. We raised last year 183 well, just under $185,000, which, uh, because of COVID, I think is just absolutely incredible. Um, we were a little under our unrestricted fundraising goal, which was $120,000. Um, we raised, I think, we still are waiting for uh, final financials, as you all are, but my best guess there is we ended up at about $106,000. So missing that goal by $14,000 is not bad. We um, ended up with raising about $78,000 for special projects for the library. And this is where we received, and um, many of you gave to the Library Giving Day. Um, all of that money went directly to support um, the Kansas Reads to Preschoolers program. We also had the COVID-19 fundraising appeal, which went, um, which was a major gift. I just got on the phone and called some folks and asked them for major gifts and we raised about $20,000 there, which gave us the ability to, or the library, the ability to increase the number, the amount of e-content that was available. Because as Jeff was saying earlier, um, all of that stuff has copyrights on it. So every time you click on an audio book or e-book, you, um, the library pays a fee. So that those uh, dollars were um, used to do that. And then our endowment, um, paid out $118,000 uh, to the library for their variety of different endowments that they have. So um, that's just a quick overview of that. I wanted to just focus a moment on the acquisition mailing uh, because of your decision to give us the access to 5,000 records. We were able to raise, and excuse my little kid guy over there, oh, please, shh, hush, <laughs> sorry. Um, she's usually not very talkative. Anyway, um, we, our goal was to raise $1,500 to uh, get 15 new gifts with an average gift of $30. What ended up happening is we received 68 new gifts and what's significant about that is that this is now a new person that before they made that gift, we did not have their contact information and we could not ask them to give again. So these are people who have, that love the library, they have a library card, they also love the library enough to put the, their money where their mouth is and send the foundation a gift. And so total, um, we raised 4600 $4,368, which is, you know, our goal was $1,500. So we're just thrilled, absolutely thrilled um, about those results with an average gift of 64. So we ended up doubling what we, you know, had budgeted for our, our uh, average gift. And 
one thing that never happens in an acquisition mailing because you have such a low response and you send out so many pieces of mail and then with the postage you always lose money acquisition mailings are always a, a money losing proposition in the beginning but it's a long-term investment well we actually ended up making more money than it cost to send out the acquisition so I just thank you all so much for giving um, us the opportunity to request a gift from these um, library card holders, and I um, can assure you that we will be coming again this year um, with a request to do something similar. We are really looking forward to 2021. One of the greatest things about that for me is it will be the first year that we have a full-time associate uh, support person at the foundation and Cambra Shaw, if you for those of you that have not met her, she's an incredible hardworking professional and she has increased the capacity of the foundation exponentially. So I can only imagine what it's gonna be like because we only had her full time for six months last year. So I'm I'm really looking forward to the new year and um, another thing to celebrate is the um, investment account of the library was up. <coughs> library foundation was up significant, so significantly. So this year we're going to just in the investment payout be able to give the library about thirty thousand dollars more. And the way that that works is we take a five-year, a three-year rolling average of our investments, and then five percent of that we then uh, take off the foundation's expenses and then the remainder of that money goes to the library. Our goal is to become completely self-sustaining so that every year we can raise enough money to pay for foundation expenses and then give the library the entire amount of the 5%. We're not there yet. And because of COVID-19, it's probably going to take us a little bit longer to get there than I had originally anticipated. But I think there's lots of good news um, to report from 2020, and we're just really looking forward to a very positive uh, 2021. And I think that the um, special projects that we will be focused on, and just to give you a little bit of an idea of how that works, is library staff talk amongst themselves, and then Christy and I, uh, develop a program for what their top uh, needs are and then I go out and see if I can find a funder. Um, the other way that that happens is I have somebody that comes to me like right now I have somebody who as I was calling to thank her for her last gift to the capital campaign she said to me well Christy I would like to give another gift this year to the library and after a little bit of a conversation with her she said i think i want it to be in it with children i think i want it to be somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars so you know now what i'll do is go to christy uh, dowell and we'll work together to figure out what the best uh, program is to um present to this potential donor that would like to give between ten and fifteen thousand dollars that's all because she participated in the capital campaign and made her final gift to the campaign it's because I called her on the telephone, so I had her telephone number, which you would be surprising how many people's telephone numbers we did not have. As I said earlier, I called her, I thanked her for her gift, which is called stewardship, and then while talking with her, she mentioned to me, brought up to me that she was going to have a little extra money this year and she would like the library to be a recipient of it. So that's just a really fun success story that I wanted to share with you all. And thank you for your time. And again, if any of you would like to have a copy of these, uh, this data, just let me know and I'll send it to you. That's all for me. Thank you, Christy. On behalf of the board, we appreciate all of your efforts this last year. It had to be incredibly difficult. This year is going to be tough too, but we're going to get through it. And you guys are doing a great job. So, Cambry, we appreciate her work. I will. Thanks so much. You bet. Thank you. Uh, next on the list would be Amanda. Is Amanda with us today? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Hi, Amanda. Welcome. Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, I don't have very many updates to give for the Friends Board, but I will uh, share that we will be voting on our yearly budget next month. Um, we kind of reviewed it this month, and but we came across a lot of 
library programs and um, some help with the foundation as well for um, just some support we can give uh, initially for the year. So we wanted to make sure that we, you know, review everything possible that we could help out with and so that we could put that through our budget. Uh, so we'll be voting on our plans for what programs we want to help support in our budget next, next month. Uh, but uh, our book sales committee will be meeting. We definitely want to do another virtual book sale. Um, so the bag sale we did um, a few months back. Uh, we really wanted to do another one in December, and it just didn't happen. So uh, we're hoping to do one at least early, early spring, um, at least one, if not two more, um, before the library opens back up. Uh, we've come up with a couple different ways to even make it more successful. The first one was successful, but um, we're going to add, you know, some more genres to it, and you know, just the distribution and getting all the bags ready. Uh, we we're going to have more members help out with that. So we're really excited about that. So we'll be meeting on that probably early February to decide that as well. So hopefully next month I'll have more things to share on that. Great. Thank you, Amanda. We look forward to hearing from you next month. Thank you. Very good. Uh, that concludes our support organization reports. Next will be the director of libraries report. Uh, before I do that, I think we need to just back up real quick on the um, semi-annual tenant and gift and memorial fund, particularly the motion to make that correction and receive and file. Thank you. Yes, back up to 6B on the semi-annual accounting of gift and memorial. We do need a motion to receive and file. Is there a motion to receive and file? This is Lauren. I move to receive and file the gift and memorial. Thank you, Lauren. We have a uh, motion by Lauren and a second by Jonathan. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Christy. And on the text plan, I think you made a motion to endorse, but then you get you got carried away with the conversation that can there then get a second and no 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 that's perfectly fine. So we just need the second and on the endorsement. So we okay. have a vote on that or just a uh, did I say endorse like you did with our the first one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We've had a little bit of progress on our children's STEAM garden for the Advanced Learning Library. And they have mobilized their equipment here to start on that. Um, and they'll start preparing the area for drilling, removing fencing and turf so that they can put in the, start erecting the steel columns and putting in the planes and the equipment in that, in that children's garden that we've been waiting a long time for. So we're really excited. They think they'll complete the installation and set up by the end of March. And that concludes my director's report. Very good, thank you. Does uh, any board member have any questions for the director or any comments? This is Donna. I have one question. Sure. What is the, the policy? I was contacted by Channel 10 News to, as a board member, to give my to give comments with regard to the naming of the, uh, the new library under Ron Walters. What's the policy on that? <clears throat> I didn't do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I didn't do it, by the way, but what is the policy? Um, well, as far as staff go, we all work through Sean Jones, our marketing communications manager. Um, I would say it, would, it might be a good idea. I don't know if we have a policy for the board members, but it might be a good rule of thumb to be coordinating, coordinating that with Sean, so our policy is that the president speaks for the board, but they have okay. been times when I have been invited to uh, respond and without, um, no, wait, there have been times when I've been approached by a reporter about giving a comment. So that's apparently the that, 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 that I took on in the past. There was uh, a process to follow. And uh, as I said, I did not I did not comment and would not have commented unless I contacted you first. So thank you for that information. Right. So we can always, uh, Kevin and uh, Sean and I can always get together and make sure messaging is clear and I'll make a comment. How I feel about this is, uh, yeah, we do have a policy, and Jonathan just explained what it was. Even as president, I am more likely to hand it off to Sean uh, to speak on behalf of the, uh, uh, the board. Uh, I have spoken at times uh, after conferring with the director. Uh, and I would tell you this, that if any of the board ever has the opportunity, feel free to just let the person inquiring know that you would be contacting the board president. And I am more than happy with the, uh, uh, with the concurrence of the director uh, for any of my board members to speak to the press. I trust you all. So uh, that would be completely up to you at that point. But as a matter of practice, it, it should be going through the board president to confirm it. Yeah, that's right. I did do that to the group site, but I'm going to move to on Channel 10 News, and what they ended up doing was contacting his wife. Right. And uh, she gave some comments. So thank you again for that. Thank you for bringing it up. Thank you for that. Anybody yeah. else? Hearing nothing, we'll go on. Next on the agenda will be announcements. I do have an announcement. And if you'll bear with me, uh, we have a board member that has resigned. Um, Lamont Anderson has indicated that he has been in this role for a significant amount of time and feels greatly that it's time to allow new energy to fill this position and to bring forth new passion and vision. He has contacted Brandon Johnson, his councilman, and uh, I'm sure that in the Near future, we'll be uh, hearing from him. We also said, and I want to, I want to read this because I really appreciate all the work that Lamont has done on behalf of the board through some very difficult times, uh, going through the building process of this facility, and of course through COVID and some other challenges that we've had. He's always been a very strong voice and a respected voice on this board. And he says, "It has been my honor to serve with you for all these years." 
I'm proud of all of our accomplishments and tough conversations that led to growth and development. Once the in-person restrictions are lifted, I will definitely stop by, but until then, thank you for all your teamwork and collaboration through the, throughout the years. And know that I'm always a resource to be utilized whenever needed at any time, and I look forward to seeing the continuation of great work from this board. So we'll put in the minutes, obviously, thank you to Vermont, and uh, that is the announcement. Does any board member have any announcements at this time? Hearing none, I believe that concludes our business. It's five after a month. Thank you for your time, and uh, we will see you next month. The board meeting is over. Thank you.